What does back to normal look like? Hell if I know. Kind of imagine it looks different to everybody at this point, and who said normal was so fucking good in the first place? But speaking only for myself, the Oscar nominations coming in looking like the standard predictable shit show of infuriating mediocrity, even with the year being what it was, is the most normal thing I think I've felt in months, so not sure that that speaks well of the current moment or poorly of my previous normal, like I said. Either way, hey, three cheers to the familiarity of bitching about something in 2022 the way you would have bitched about it before the apocalypse. Let's run through this shit show. So hey, guess what? A bunch of the nominees are things I didn't publish reviews for yet, because this year I wasn't working for anyone that was paying for a weekly film review show, and given there was a viral plague happening, I had other priorities occasionally. Have I seen most of them? Yes, they're festival and award season movies, so they sent screeners, and pretty much all the major stuff that landed is stuff I've seen. Have most of you seen them? No, probably not. They're festival and award season movies. Most of them only just started opening wide, if at all. Reviews will post if and when I get to it, now that they've got awards profiles and there might be interest. Will there be interest? The hell if I know. Predictably, the entertainment press's attempt to meme a Best Picture nomination for Spider-Man No Way Home into existence did not actually yield any results, so now we get to go through weeks of stupid discourse about that, interrupted briefly by a week or two of even stupider discourse about what it means when The Batman either does or doesn't exceed that film's opening weekend box office take. I am so tired. As I said before, I wasn't really of the opinion that Spider-Man was a year's best kind of movie in and of itself to begin with, but I also said mediocre to bad movies get nominated for or even win Best Picture all the time, so I was kind of agnostic on the subject of whether or not a just good movie like Spider-Man deserved it, and now, lo and behold, to prove my point, here's an embarrassing Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay nomination for Don't Look Up, the platonic ideal of an almost shockingly trite, dim-witted, half-assed movie coasting to high honors on the basis of having well-intentioned message, being watched by everyone because we've all got Netflix and said, okay, why not, when it came up on the watch next button and everyone who votes for the Oscars being buddies with someone in star-studded main cast. Anyway, for you posers in the crowd, the good news is that this year, yes, Jane Campion really has only made seven features other than this one, and believe it or not, only one of them is genuinely god-awful, so if Power of the Dog, which has the most nominations, wins, you won't have to do that much catch-up work in order to pretend you've been a huge fan this whole time. So now then... Best Actor, Javier Bardem, being the Ricardos, Benedict Cumberbatch, The Power of the Dog, Andrew Garfield, Tick Tick Boom, Will Smith, King Richard, Denzel Washington, The Tragedy of Macbeth. Very strong lineup here, even if I'd have swapped out Cumberbatch or Bardem for Peter Dinklage and Cyrano this year, but the fact of the matter is, this is probably Will Smith's category to lose no matter what. He's really good in King Richard, the movie was well received and apparently did well enough on HBO Max, he's one of the great movie stars of his generation, he's beloved as an entertainer and well-liked as a person in the business. Everyone basically agrees that he's had one of these coming for a while now, and again, people really dug the movie. I think he takes this one. Possible upset for Denzel, who's really good in Macbeth, or Bardem for being the Ricardo, seem to go over really well with the Academy, but I think it's Will Smith here. Best Actress, Jessica Chastain, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Olivia Colman, The Lost Daughter, Penelope Cruz, Parallel Mothers, Nicole Kidman, Being the Ricardos, Kristen Stewart, Spencer. The conventional wisdom is that Best Actress is always the most interesting category, and it is once again this year as well. Yeah, this is a powerhouse lineup of performers and performances. And everyone except Kristen Stewart has won once before. You might say that makes her a good bet, especially given how Spencer, a Princess Diana biopic from earlier this year, fits neatly into the Academy's absolute favorite type of role to award and the ongoing narrative of her own ascension to have finally broken away from being the Twilight girl. But she missed out on a Screen Actors Guild nod before this, so who can say? Meanwhile, this is the first real heat behind Penelope Cruz of the whole season for a movie that didn't really get that much attention otherwise. Maybe that's a Dark Horse candidate. I would still bet on Stewart, but this is never a safe category to be putting money on. Best Supporting Actor, Kieran Hines, Belfast, Troy Kutzer, Coda, Jesse Plemons, The Power of the Dog, J.K. Simmons, Being the Ricardos, Cody Smith-McPhee, Power of the Dog. Coda was a surprise in the Best Picture category as a smaller movie among the big shots, so it seems like the voters really got into it in Kutzer's history. Making turn as the first deaf man nominated for an Oscar seems to be a big, big part of why, so he could be the favorite just based on whatever heat got him here in the first place. Otherwise, I lean toward Hines for Belfast. On this one, given two actors for the same movie tend to cancel each other out in historically, i.e. Power of the Dog, and J.K. Simmons is a favorite, but also is one before, whereas Hines is extremely well regarded, but also oddly under awarded as these go, so that could be the case here. Best Supporting Actress, Jesse Buckley, Little Lost Daughter, Ariana DeBose, West Side Story, Judy Dench, Belfast, Kirsten Dunst, Power of the Dog, Anjana Ellis, King Richard. Anjana Ellis getting in for King Richard shocked the hell out of everyone here. Not so much that she doesn't deserve it, she's excellent, always has been, just a lot of people expected that movie to be the vehicle for Will's nomination, and only that. So for her to be up well is an indicator not only for the Academy really digging her performance, but maybe the film itself going to be much bigger too. Still, in this specific category, my gut instinct is to bet on Kirsten Dunst, because Power of the Dog has a lot of nominations, and I think that has to mean at least one of the acting nods breaks for a win. Best Director, 
Paul Thomas Anderson, Licorice Pizza, Kenneth Branagh, Belfast, Jane Campion, Power of the Dog, Ryusuke Hamaguchi, Drive My Car, Steven Spielberg, by Side Story. All right, let's get real about this. I'm as happy as anyone to see Ryusuke Hamaguchi get nominated for Drive My Car. I'm glad Steven Spielberg and West Side Story are nominated, even though the film didn't find a big audience in theaters. But it's ridiculous to nominate Dune for Best Picture and not Denis Villeneuve for Best Director. The only reason that giant shuddering tower of bloated, goofy nonsense can be sort of justified as a Best Picture nominee is because he's a hell of a director, and thus he turned it into a really well-composed, staged, paced, handsome-looking, actual good movie that's also a bloated tower of goofy nonsense. Anyway, I think this is Campion's prize to lose and that the Academy clearly loved the movie, and also I think she's sitting in the Spike Lee memorial we were supposed to give you one of these years ago and didn't, so thanks for making a good movie again. Please come make sure we aren't jointly remembered for having passed each other by seat this year. Because again, the movie is good, and her career batting average, very, very strong. Best Picture. Belfast. Coda. Don't Look Up. Drive My Car. Dune. King Richard. Licorice Pizza. Nightmare Alley. The Power of the Dog. West Side Story. Uh, the smart money is on Power of the Dog. It has all the right nominations, they seem to love every performance, it was cleaning up at the other shows, seems to be unstoppable, but maybe not. See, the Oscars changed a lot about its membership and voting over the last few years as part of a mostly well-intentioned attempt at remaining relevant, and as a result, they are a lot less easy to predict in this specific category for that same amount of time. That doesn't mean Power of the Dog isn't the odds-on favorite, in fact, it almost certainly is, just that there are vulnerabilities that didn't used to exist. Best Picture now uses a preferential ballot or ranked choice voting system, meaning that instead of a simple majority vote, to determine the winner, voters rank all the nominees in order of preference. The film with the highest preferential consensus is the winner. Now, without digging into math and probabilities, basically, have you ever tried to get a really big, fairly diverse group of people to agree on what to order for lunch? Same basic principle as that. Everyone's got different, fairly specific, fairly personal first choices and hard no's, but ask people to put something in their number two spot, number three, four, five, sixth spot. Statistically speaking, those spots generally get closer together and have more in common. So a movie like Power of the Dog is a lot of people's favorite. It's an actor showcase. It's dark, moody, grim meditation on toxic masculinity, oh wow, Jane Campion only makes a movie once every five to seven years, she might not be here again. A lot of those things make it a rough watch that plenty of viewers are also likely to get totally turned off by, meaning it's also on the bottom of a lot of lists. It's divisive, basically. See also genre movies like Dune, Drive My Car, which is three hours long and from Japan, Nightmare Alley, very stylish and old school, but also dark and nasty, you get the picture. As such, unless all those acting nods means the old-time wisdom is back in play and Power of the Dog is just overwhelmed by the sheer numbers in the act branch, it's actually better to be one of the agreeable, everyone likes it middle choicer. You know, the movies that aren't necessarily everyone's first choice, but are almost no one's bottom choice. And that can mean feel-good crowd pleasers like King Richard, old-fashioned throwbacks like Kenneth Branagh's Belfast, or Spielberg's West Side Story. It could even make it happen for a big streaming hit like Don't Look Up, although I'd call that a long shot still with so few other nominations. It's so probably still power of the dog, but if there's going to be an upset, I'd be looking in King Richard's direction. As for the other big questions of this year's Academy Awards, such as who's going to host, or or will anyone actually give a damn? I have no idea. But that's what I think for this year. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture.